Hi guys, it's Martha N here and welcome back. I have a tarot video for you today, but I'm going to do a particular, I'm going to kind of discuss a particular thing with you around the tarot. And what I'm looking at is your birth card in the tarot. Now, I I got my first Rider Waite deck, I'd say when I was I'd say I was about 16 or 17. Lads, it's so, like I'm as old as granite. It's so long ago. And I don't even know what happened that deck. I remember like, you know, we didn't have internet. There, um, I live in Ireland, so like, it was, it was kind of frowned upon. Uh, so you couldn't go to your local library and find anything on tarot either. So it was literally going by word of mouth and my own experience with the deck. Um, had that for a while um, then I I don't know what happened that deck sometimes I think certain things that did I lose it or give it away I can't remember but I then went on to the I think it's called the mythic tarot now I still have that deck but it's in bits because I used it for so long and what I would do is I would pull it out every week and I would like lay out a reading and I would sit with that for a while it was it was brilliant actually and I used that deck I'd say for about god it must have been about 15 years I, I don't I couldn't tell you for a really long time and then of course I discovered all the wealth of fantastic artists out there who are creating all these tarot decks but I have set with the I've set with my tarot card for years now and I just want you to know that it is such a beneficial thing to do. If you're kind of a seeker and you're looking to understand yourself and the world that you move in, it's absolutely amazing. Now, I think, I don't know, I have this book by Mary Kate Greer and I'm not, look, I'm not gonna go look through it now because I had the, f I had the original, I'd say it was the original copy of this book, but I, I bought it again because it, you know, they fall apart after time. So I think it's actually in this book, Tarot for Yourself. But what I'm, what I'm talking about today is, and, th and that's by Mary Kate Greer, actually, it's a fantastic book if you're looking into tarot. You can bring in other cards from the minor arcana as well. Um, but what I'm dealing with today is your birth card and that's the one I tend to kind of stay with the most and it is within the major arcana so you're talking about you know you're uh, the magician the high priestess uh, the hermit which is my card the chariot so on and so forth those particular cards now there's 22 cards but the kind of fools the fool stands alone okay it stands on its own so what you do to find your birth card, um, I know people usually have fancy cups for their coffee. I'm sorry I don't because I've just come back from the petrol station and I couldn't resist a decaf. So sorry. But um, you take your year, okay, the year you were born, and you add that to the month you were born, and then you add that to the day you were born. Now, if you come up with something like 25, you're going to add those numbers together to come up with 7, okay? The reason why is because in this instance, if you leave the fool aside, you're only dealing with 21 cards. Now, if you add your numbers together and you come up with 12, then don't add those numbers together. 12 is your card. Um, that's the hanged man. Okay, so... Do you see what I mean? If it's like a 26, you add the numbers together because there's only 21 major arcana cards outside of the Fool. And it, but if you come up with something um, like um, anything other, you keep. You know, so if you come up with 18, if you come up with 19, you don't add the numbers together. You keep them because that is within the range of the major arcana cards. Okay, I hope I've explained myself right on that. Um, so my card is the Hermit. And what I wanted to kind of talk to you about is, so for example, I can't, my Rider Waite Smith deck is somewhere in the house, lurking somewhere. So you'll know this is the original Hermit card. Okay, it's number nine in the 
major arcana so I work down to that I came to nine so you know the card you've seen it 101 times and it's you know that kind of old man with his staff and he's um, got a lantern in his hand and he's kind of shedding light on something for you okay so what I'm going to show you here is how artists have kind of depicted it in different ways in different decks so in the Cesare Beetle I absolutely love this hermit card now this might not resonate with you because if it's not your card it's not going to resonate with you but we'll say for example your card is the chariot think of the chariot cancer is associated with the chariot it's literally, I mean, it can be mundane things. I've seen the, char the, the chariot show up with a car or, <laughs> you know, modes of transport. But also the chariot would show, it's literally about going into yourself, about what is it about you that is driven to bring all aspects of yourself together, you know, mind, body, spirit, maybe you, you have this need to move a lot or you um you you're struggling to find control or you were searching for control in your life or you know you literally would dive into that card and you research that card and i think i've said this before the thing i really love about tarot is that as with the hermit card i'm i'm a study person i study everything i always have a book in one hand and a notepad in the other and that's that's literally how I operate. It is my love. It fires me up when I find something that um, really gives me like an aha moment. And I know that I can dive deeper into it. Every book that I can find. And I'm old school. I go for books, guys. The internet's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But um, I like the whole action of study. Everything about it is important to me. And... That is what the Hermit card is about. And I have found that with the Hermit card, for example, with me, I've I've learned to understand why. How can I explain this? I'm trying to explain what finding your birth card is and how it can begin to help you to understand yourself, your path and Maybe aspects of yourself that you don't understand why you are the way you are. Um, and I feel the tarot card, the hermit card, and keeping that card at the back of my mind and just meditating with it a lot over the years has really shown me. It's, it's brought me into alignment with who I am. If that make, Does that make sense? I find that... I'm a very practical person, very practical. I love science and for years, for a long time, I couldn't understand why I was also drawn to the esoteric and um, I question everything. I just question absolutely everything. And I kind of never understood that about me because I, I do love astrology as well. And for a long time, like I, I didn't really understand the whole idea of your moon being important to you or your ascending sign being important to you. And years back when I began to realize, uh, and because I read astrology with tarot as well, I began to realize that it was to do with my, I have a Scorpio moon. And it made so much sense to me. And again, that opened up the hermit card for me because nobody else around me, maybe my son is very interested in, in, in studying, he, like he's a lifelong learner as well, but nobody else around me seems to be as interested in the big questions. Like, I want to know why we're here. Okay, I, I want to know what is the purpose of this? Because I feel deep down inside there is something, there is some reason why we are here. And I thought, what is wrong with me that I want to know these things? And everybody else seems to be okay, they seem to be fine, they're happy to move along, 
which is it's fantastic there was sometimes like in my life where I literally envied people because they seemed just okay with with things they seemed okay and I was like no there's 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 something we're missing <laughs> I can't explain it any other way. And when I began to sit with the, the hermit card, at first, and I'm going to be honest, when I first heard this concept, I mean, I've loved the tarot from the moment I got it. But when I first understood the idea of sitting with your birth card, I kind of thought, you know, I'm, I am a skeptical person. So I, something has to really resonate with me before it'll kind of make it into my paradigm, you know. But I sat with the hermit card and I, I was kind of like, okay, this, this this is a practice that I don't think is going to do anything for me. But I, I persevered and I sat with it and I sat with it. And I began to, the more I understood of the Hermit card, the more I understood of the symbology. Is that a word? Symbology? It, you know, the symbols within the card. And the more I understood its history, its place within the tarot, the astrological elements around it, the more I begin to accept and to understand that that is me. That's who, that's actually who I am. I am this person. And then when I understood the Scorpio moon, which in the last like five years, that has become so significant for me. Um, not always in good ways. Uh, like I've, I, I, you begin to understand yourself better. I know that there are like personality kind of, um, aren't there? There are lots of these like personality things you can do, like the um, Enneagram, I think is one of them. And uh, I, I've looked over those things over the years, but nothing. And I'm sure like they really work with people and I've delved into those, trust me. I think there's nothing out there I haven't delved into. That's the one thing about me. I'm not afraid to um i'm not afraid to look into the dark and or to find like if somebody says to me that subject is taboo you'll find me in the middle of it i i cannot help it because i think everything no data is irrelevant okay no information is irrelevant it's like no book is irrelevant even if the book is absolutely stupid when you've read it or tried to read it, at least you know that is something, that is what not to do. That is what not you should not be or, that's what I mean by no information is irrelevant. And I think it disempowers us when we don't explore. And the more I sat with the Hermit card over the years, the more I have realized that that is, it is my personality down to the ground. It is who I am. And any time something is coming up for me, sorry, I have to take a, God, this is a real ramble. But any time I find myself in a position where some something new has happened in my life and it's maybe, it's maybe um, kind of facing off against something that I really believe in strongly, I almost get a kind of a panic because I feel, oh, I thought I'd reached a belief about that. I thought I'd understood that. Then I think of the the hermit card and I think, okay, I need the lantern. <laughs> I need to shine light on this and why this is now coming into my life. Um, a couple of years ago, I'm not going to go into detail now on this because it's particularly private, but a couple of years ago, in 2019 actually, I had, as I said, I'm a, I'm a very practical person. I'm a very, very strong person. Um, I'm kind of a no-nonsense person. And I know, you know, if anybody comes across this video, they'll think, oh, you're no-nonsense, but you're into tarot. I can't explain that, okay? But the way I am is if something works for me, it works for me. And I, I can see the value in it. That's fine. But a couple of years ago, I had a really bad instance where, okay, I had an anxiety issue and I had never experienced that before. My family were amazing. I spent a couple of, it was kind of a really, really rough period. And um, 
obviously you can't be with your family all the time and they can't be with you all the time and I, you know I'm, I'm good now thank God but the one thing that was with me all the time was my ability to study my ability to figure out for myself what was happening excuse me and also um, a tarot deck my tarot deck was with me all the time I it never left my I know I never I always have a tarot deck with me anyway but I got so much comfort from tarot because yes tarot is like fortune telling of course it is and it is it has guided me in things guys I I I can't even begin to explain it what it has done and it, you know to some extent I used to question why it was happening like there's got to be some sort of a number situation or there's got to be this that and the other thing and I went down all those roads and then I settled on the idea that I think it's yourself speaking to yourself and you know more than what you what you think you know I think we are so much more than we even can conceive of on a good day okay and I think the tarot opens that I really believe that I really 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 believe that and I think when you sit with your own card when you sit with that that card in my case the hermit um, it it just you begin to see, it's like you're holding up a mirror but that mirror isn't just it isn't the reflection is not you know how do I look today or how is my hair today your reflection is all of the inner workings and everything that is behind you and when I mean behind you I mean the real you that that essence of who you are um, because I really believe that I think I think this is only a portion of who we are okay and you know as I said I'm as old as granite and that's the conclusion I have come to but I think that's what the tarot is. It reflects back at you all the inner workings. And because there is so much to you, you sometimes can't see it. You can't see or hear or sense because you're so focused to outward. And so to me, having your, um, having your, your tarot card, your birth card. Now, there is another deck that I, jeez lads, you've got to get it. it. It is the Tarot of the Vampires. I have loved that book, that tarot deck for years. The book is exceptional. And the creator of that deck will go through a whole, whole series where you can bring in other, de other cards to literally kind of support your main card. But um, I would often, for example, like I would use the death card as well a lot because obviously Scorpio is associated with the death card and Scorpio is my moon I'm a Virgo son I'm Virgo so when I say to you that like I'm a really kind of practical person I'm I I critique things I mean I'm quintessential Virgo I will examine everything I analyze everything I my head is filled with loads of useless bits of information but also a lot of good stuff okay but that's I, that's the Virgo me my Virgo-ness but my Scorpio moon is like so intensely it's very prominent for me at the moment so I bring in the death card now what happens if your card is actually now that I the tarot doesn't scare me at all um I got past that a long time ago um I actually think my first Rider Waite deck, <laughs> now that I think of it, yeah, the first, the very first Rider Waite deck I got, and as I said, I was born into the Catholic religion. Um, I'm not now. I have very fond memories of it. I, um, I've learned a lot from it, uh, but I, I don't consider myself Catholic. I don't really. I am interested in religions very much so. Um, I, I, I'm really interested in why people believe what they believe in if that makes sense um but we'll say for example oh yeah my first tarot deck my first rider weight because i was still very much 
I was coming out of that religion, but I, I was questioning it, okay? But I, I got my hands on the Rider Waite deck and I had it a couple of weeks and it was like reading in my hand. I mean, it was literally, <laughs> it was just, it was reading for me, big time. And I got so spooked one day, I ran out of the house and I, I threw the deck away, <laughs> okay? I know it's, I often look back and I think, Jesus, what was I doing? But I, then I, I subsequently got another deck and from that moment on, um, I'd say about six months later, I got, I was very lucky actually, I got my hands on another deck because we didn't have like woo-woo shops or anything around. We only had one shop in town that's actually still there and she sold them randomly or, you know, she'd get an odd one in. So I, I got it again and by that time, I had reconciled myself with, with tarot. I knew that this was something that was meant to be with me. I almost consider it like a book, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, what, what do you do? Because this video has gone on forever. You'll be here until tomorrow sometime. But what happens if you get like the devil, <laughs> okay? Like, okay, I have, absolutely no qualms about that whatsoever in my head right now i understand what the person is i i'm not saying i would know that person inside out but i would be so interested in the person who got the devil card because obviously the devil is associated with capricorn first and foremost my husband's a capricorn and i just love those those people they're so like <laughs> They're such leaders and um, prepared to do what other people aren't prepared to do. And I feel like, so for example, if you got the devil card, you know, what is it that you're looking at? You're looking at um, the dark aspects of the self, maybe um, addiction. Are you called to work with people that are, do you know, do you find yourself helping people that are in addictive states or have you struggled with that yourself? Um, do you have, and, and you could never kind of rec reconcile why you're called into those dark places. Maybe you um, can't let yourself go. You know, maybe you think that lust is wrong or desire is wrong or to to literally, you know, run naked through the forest is wrong please don't do that i'm not advocating <laughs> that you get arrested but uh, what uh, you know it's that you're you're hiding from life do you see what i mean there is nothing to fear and always remember you have agency when it comes to the cards please remember that you don't when when a tarot card comes up and you've asked a specific question we'll say you're doing it in a fortune telling setting and you, you're asking a question and the, it comes up for you. That is not written in stone. You have agency. You can say, well, okay, I don't want it to go down this route. So what can I do to pull the energy in a different way? You can do that. Or you can literally say, it doesn't resonate with me. End of story. Now, but I find when you, tarot is a conversation, when you come into that conversation, and you allow it to be open with yourself and with the tarot, even just for that time that you're reading. Um, it's, it is so beneficial. And fortune telling is only one small aspect of tarot. Tarot is a way, it is a key to seeing everything that you really are. And I mean everything. Um, and to understand why you interact the way you interact, why you walk the path you walk, and to also accept, you know, why you walk the path you're walking. Because I find a lot of us have a hard time accepting who we are, and then we land in this comparison mode, okay, with other people. And I think it's maybe age as well. Hey, look, I'm entering crone stage and I, I'm loving it, by the way. Um, but you also begin to see how comparison really is the thief of joy. I kid you not. And I'm, am I guilty of it? Damn right I'm guilty of it. Very much so. Uh, 
but but I've learned over the years and through the tarot to actually see how I am who I am why I am the way I am I am a complete and utter like seeker and I've learned to really come into alignment with that as I said and that is what tarot can do for you so check out if you I'm I'm nearly 100% sure it is in Mary Greer's um, book and this book is out for a long time so if you kind of want to delve deeper into that and getting your birth card and working with it this is not these aren't short-term practices either I want to make that clear these are practices that you you continue on with over your life because it's almost like, as I said, holding that mirror up to yourself, seeing who you are and understanding why you are the way you are and if this means anything to you at all. Um, and then being able to walk your own path confidently. Okay, So that's a complete ramble on the tarot and on your, your birth card. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, throw them out there to me. And um, many, many blessings to you guys. Take care. Bye bye.